I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Jonathan Stone. I am a very close friend of Kathy's. I live on another parallel world than the one she does. She likes to hike in the same area where my community lives. I live in a commune up at the base um, of Long's Peak and Mount Meeker. And uh, I'm a, uh, I've known Kathy about a year. She started channeling about leaping to another parallel world um, about, I guess, about two or three years ago. And then last year, she split off a parallel self. Um, her parallel self's name is Lini. I, I believe she's also done a video, and we'll probably do more, um, <clears throat> talking about her experiences of leaving uh, Kathy's parallel world, uh, which probably most people viewing this video are on, and coming to live with my family for a while. She discovered, um, and Kathy has discovered, that we have been involved in parallel world exchange. Um, boy, for decades for me. I'm, I'm about Kathy's age. And <clears throat> we, uh, uh, I know that Kathy was very involved in international exchange uh, for long periods of her life. It's that natural and easy on my parallel um, to um, go between parallel worlds and, or speak between parallel worlds um, I think on your world, you consider the, the physical body and, and your physical senses to be the most important marker of your experience. I think one of the things Kathy has loved most about getting to know me and my family and several people on our parallel is um, we, we live in a very telepathic world. And what that means is that, you know, I think you use the word astral body, that your thoughts and feelings are part of the astral body level, uh, you could call it, of your aura, only you have to think multidimensionally um, when you get into talking about the etheric body, which is the part of your aura that matches your physical. It's like the energetic equivalent of your skin, your organs, you know, your whole body. We call that the etheric body. And often an energy healer will work on that level. They'll just run their hands over your aura and um, uh, make changes there that will greatly affect your physical body. But then there's a kind of a higher dimensional body called the astral body. And this is the body that popularly, I believe, on your parallel, is thought of as the spirit body that leaves at death, when there's a little silver cord connected to your physical body to, um, from the astral body, and when that cord gets cut, you're free. And um, But on our parallel world, we do a lot uh, we spend a lot of our conscious time really in the astral level of being. Um, this is a, a level of being that you also spend a lot of time in every time you think a thought or feel a feeling when you're awake, but also then when you're asleep. Um, you move uh, during certain periods of sleep uh, multidimensionally into the astral body um, and experience reality in a way that is much quicker um, in which you feel much more connected to everyone around you and in which you um, uh, experience the equivalence of your thoughts and feelings uh, coming at you in what seems like experience that's external to you, um, but you it, things change so quickly. Like you know in dream state how your dreams can just change quickly, 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 and you have to you have to get used to that. 
So on my parallel world, since we're a telepathic world, what Kathy calls telepathic, what we have determined um, that probably we are um, higher, a little bit higher dimensional, a little bit higher vibrating in my parallel world than you are in yours, but not so much that Kathy uh, can't um, totally track us. Um, she has gotten into our habit, um, whether this is uh, uh, totally always a good way to spend your time or not, we're, we're constantly in telepathic communi uh, communication with people we love. Uh, we chat all the time, and, and she finds it very interesting uh, how many people now on your world walk around with, uh, you know, cell, cell phones always to the ear or in front of them, um, chatting away no matter where you are. Well, we do that, only we do it without the equipment. And this is an astral body connection um, that... I firmly believe that everyone in your culture would be much more centered in the astral body and much more uh, able to chat telepathically if your airways were not full of wireless signals. It really compromises the body's ability to relax and open up and the astral body's uh, uh, integrity. It, it um, really blasts. Um, the uh, health of the astral body to have these human-made signals always imprisoning you and limiting how far out you can uh, reach in a natural way to communicate with the rest of the universe. Now I'm giving you <clears throat> all of this introduction to how, uh, kind of to explain how Kathy and I have communicated. Um, very often, actually, for the last year. And uh, we are, she's getting more and more able <clears throat> to um, see where I am when I'm talking to her, get, get kind of an image of that. She's more and more able to feel where I am when I talk to her and who's around me and what even uh, what natural setting I might be in. So her, her ability to, I, I would see it as um, extend more of herself, extend more of her senses into vibration with, and, and meet, you know, if you see it as kind of um, walkie-talkies trying to match signals, um, we're getting so that we can fine-tune better. And she's getting so that she's not freaked out when she does see more into my world and has participated quite a bit lately, um, <clears throat> meeting a lot of people and um, uh, participating um, in council meetings, what we call uh, council meetings. Um, I'm involved uh, very uh, deeply with um, what we call um, the um, sometimes we change the name of it all the time because we know what we're talking about. But she says, "Give us a formal name." Okay, the um, Institute for Parallel Exchange. <clears throat> now, this is, uh, in short, you know, a group of of people in my parallel world and in a variety of parallel worlds who truly believe in the value of sharing cultures and sharing, sharing technology between cultures. <clears throat> now, um, not all of these beings that we exchange with are humans. Some are what you would call extraterrestrials, and many are what you would call nature spirits. Uh, <clears throat> the range of parallel worlds and the range of ones that we humans, with our particular sensory perception, our, sense, our particular range of frequency, our particular kind of intelligence, 
um, the range that we can reach when we reach out and say, who's, who else is out there in the universe? And, and a variety of frequencies and densities, which we call parallel worlds. And, and uh, you know, those, those vibrations and those densities determine what you can experience. Um, uh, it, it's, it's infinite, as far as I know. Even the, even the range of parallel worlds that we humans can reach. And of course, I have um, common ancestry, probably, with Kathy and, and her partner here, Peter McGill, behind the camera. Uh, they have Irish ancestors, and so do I. Uh, and our parallel worlds are really quite similar. Um, we do not have the combustion engine. We have a whole different way of building our homes and, and growing our food and eating our food and uh, everything on my parallel world is involved with relationship. We see nothing as dead. We see everything as conscious. And I know there are groups on your parallel world that are working under that assumption as well, but they're, they're not uh, very common at this point. But we have plenty of interface um, between our two parallel worlds that I think Leaping, we have found, um, I have worked now with thousands of, ref uh, I call them refugees from your parallel world, um, if you're on the same one Kathy is, and, and some other worlds that are, are fairly close to the experience and density of her parallel world. Um, we are airlifting people, so to speak, off of your worlds because we see a tremendous ecological, economic, psychological, spiritual demise going on on those worlds, and we don't see, uh, some of them are not very viable. And we know that there is a lot of concern among your peoples um, that you may be on a sinking ship. But there are other parallel worlds that are very close to the sinking ship parallel worlds uh, that Kathy also is in very close connection with where uh, things are getting better and um, uh, the ship won't sink if you act and if you bring your culture into alignment with what is needed um, for nature to be able to function at all and uh, to, you know, to come up with sustainable systems of living and cultural exchange among yourselves even. We have, um, I think in, in previous uh, videos in this series, uh, talked mainly to the sinking ship, um, a parallel worlds, who of course have a great interest. <laughs> and, um, they're very motivated uh, to learn about the leap. And, and um, the leap uh, that I refer to is, is simply working with nature beings, who we call the leapers, who are the the beings that help bring you into incarnation when you're born and help you leave incarnation when you're when you're dead and um, in between um, they can give you what may feel like a new life in the same body and um, you know with memory of your previous experience but with major components of your life switched around. Um, they always get your permission to do this and work by, by request of people. Um, I, I ha this is the basic stuff of miracles. People, and, and I work very closely with the Leapers. We, um, <clears throat> I'm sometimes brought in uh, as a healer and basically, uh, sometimes what we do is jump someone to a parallel selfhood um, where the accident or the illness did not happen. And so you're coming along, you're near death, and then you experience what your people would call a miracle. Um, for us, it's you shoot off a parallel self that did not have the disease, for instance. And then you get to wake up one day and carry on your life as if you had never had that disease. 
I have seen uh, miracles. You know, there have been times, years in my life when this is mainly what I was involved in, was healing. And it would be like a da daily miracles of the people that came to me, just daily miracles. I mean, you have to align yourself, of course, with um, changes on, on many levels, psychological, emotional. You know, you, you have to really be willing to change your life to become the new person who didn't need that disease, let's say, or who learned enough from it that then they're ready to just shift. Um, so this is kind of how I have, um, until um, till just a few years ago, um, really thought of parallel selves, uh, selfhood. So my main experience with that has been in healing people. And also what we do when we travel to parallel worlds. Um, we teleport, we um, ha lay our body very still in a, you know, we, we, we create, uh, I, I love working on my room that um, I do this work in. It's, um, you know, got just the right energies built into the architecture, into the, the stones that I choose, into the little stream that runs through it, through the room. The, just the right plants, my allies, you know. Um, and from there, I, I lay my body down. I always have someone who's checking on the body. And I lift up in my astral body. And of course, again, that's an interdimensional lift then. I resonate with my destination, whether that's with someone I'm trying to reach uh, that I already know, or if I'm... Um, have some other purpose in uh, that I'm reaching for in the resonation. Now, my daughter loves to beat the loves to just go <laughs> and see what she can explore and find, and then she resonates with finds you know resonates with whatever she manages to meet uh, uh, in terms of a consciousness. And again, this can be a human consciousness. It can be a nature being. It can be a landscape. It can be an et what you would call an et, which we think is a pretty funny word actually because you wouldn't believe how many beings that you would consider ETs live right here on earth uh, just at a very different frequency in a different parallel world. Uh, Kathy has met some of these beings um, uh, right up on Long's Peak um, area. So, so then once we are really focused on Let's say I'm visiting a friend on another parallel world. Um, I, I would step down a body. Um, I mean, sometimes we just uh, stay in the astral body and are able to communicate that way. But if we really want to uh, submerge, we will step down a body from our astral body. But um, using the uh, frequency of the, the new world, um, our body will feel and look different according to the uh, matrix, you might say, of density of the parallel world I've, I've reached. And I usually don't stay more than a day or two um, before going back and needing to eat, take care of my body in the old place. Um, uh, so, so when I'm stepped down, I have actually two bodies going one back that kind of probably looks like it's in a coma back home and one in the new land. When I'm ready to leave the new land, again I go up into the astral which kind of dissolves the whatever physicality I've had and and then think myself home, resonate with home. Um, I can stay uh, longer than that. Um, and um, anyway, so this is this is the basic way. Uh, and then when we come home, we have to downstep the experiences we experienced in the in the other world into our physical brain of my usual body. So in essence, it's creating a parallel self, going out, experiencing another world, dissolving that parallel self, and, but bringing its experiences back into my main body. This is not that different than what you do every night in the sleep state. It really isn't. You participate in all sorts of council meetings and um, meet people that you're going to meet in the physical. You meet them in the astral ahead of time. 
often these are I feel very dreamlike some of these meetings and they you may have experiences in the astral full-blown emotional experiences um, that then you decide you don't really want to bring into being on the physical and these can involve just one other person are we going to meet or not you know in the physical or it can involve a whole group consciousness of um, the, if the community is making a whole uh, the whole community is making a decision. Uh, sometimes this will happen. Um, many of your events that uh, make it big into your media um, happen first collectively on these other levels, and then if you decide it's yes, you're going to <laughs> yes, you're going to destroy the earth with global warming. You know, <laughs> then you play that out. But decisions are, also, are are certainly made, and and I'm not about on global warming. I shouldn't even use that as as an example. I know it's on many people's minds of really what that means on your parallel. But um, okay, so that's that's the background. Um, chances are good that you, uh, perhaps, and certainly many of your scientists and engineers. And artists, well, most of you, are probably interacting with especially soul family members of yours who live on other parallel worlds uh, during usually probably the sleep state, but not necessarily in a, in a creative state. You may be able to bring through ideas and inspirations. Writers do this all the time from soul kin, usually on another parallel world. We are uh, planning to really work this consciously. This is what uh, something Kathy's very involved with now, is how do we feed ideas, um, for instance, to the, um, the par <coughs> excuse me, the parallel world where John Kennedy Jr. was President of the United States and uh, their whole parallel world hit a dead end ecologically and morally um, to where the leapers um, and other forces <laughs> froze time, froze time, said you can't go any farther, we're not going to let you to totally destroy this. But there they are in limbo. Um, they're... Uh, and and so now it's it, it's the calling of many of us to go back in time um, to their parallel world and help the people there make better decisions so that they don't end up in the limbo state. So the the um, parallel world scenario where they end up frozen in time because they were about to really um, go into unimaginable destitution, you might call it, uh, and uh, destruction um, of really what even holds a human being together, what even holds the matrix of a world together. When you start messing on that le level, the universe does say, wait a minute. We're not going to allow that. So a lot of us are, are gearing up to go back, and, and some of us have parallel selves who are on that um, um, parallel world, and, and so we can communicate with our parallel selves that are there and urge them to, you know, kind of be spirit guides to your own parallel self, uh, a spirit guide to your own parallel self, and, and encourage different decisions to be made, and actually put different kinds of books and uh, movies into their cultural uh, conversation to try to swing things differently back in time. So when, when we're in this sphere, it's, it's a very creative sphere of interaction when you're relating across parallel worlds. Peter um, uh, McGill, is, uh, Kathy's partner, is uh, behind the camera. Uh, he is, uh, has been a general contractor for decades and is very concerned now with 
um, how green building on your parallel world seems to be not that earth friendly many times. Uh, uh, incredible rationalizations are made of um, why blowing, for instance, uh, toxic insulation materials into a wall or is a green building practice, you know, because it increases the insulation value, you know, things like that that are a bit, you know, like um, don't seem to be sustainable practice. And um, there's a lot going on, uh, they tell me, on your world in the green, uh, like compact fluorescent bulbs with mercury in them um, um, that are, Kathy tells me, that are not allowed to be made in your, in the U.S. Um, because the, the, the factories are so toxic. You know, is, this is a green, considered a green building uh, practice to use compact fluorescent bulbs. Uh, things like that. Um, so part of, of uh, we think, um, why I, uh, Kathy and Peter have managed to reach out to our parallel world specifically um, is because I think we are so involved in, in cultural exchange, which includes um, exchanging uh, building practices. And our parallel world is close enough to yours where a lot of really useful inventions and practices are, I think are very exchangeable. And we, we learned from you too. Um, Peter has uh, split off a parallel self who is a friend of mine on my parallel world. And as we've uh, welcomed thousands of refugees from your parallel world to mine, um, we found that our sewage uh, systems and um, some of our building practices were too particular and labor-intensive to handle the flood of refugees that have come. So he has uh, been, uh, and, and his knowledge of irrigation systems, have, uh, you know, he's, he's brought invaluable knowledge to us from your world of how to kind of mass produce things a little bit more than we do and um, deal with large numbers of people. Our population is, is about two billion, I think, on the planet, yeah, which makes a huge difference, um, I think, between our two parallels. I don't think we even have two billion, actually, somewhere somewhere between one and two billion. Um, you know, I haven't personally counted, so I'm not sure, but I don't know how, how on your parallel world <clears throat> They do personally count everybody <laughs> for your estimates, but anyway, I know that's uh, that you have a lot more according to your statistics. So, so the exchange goes both ways, is what I'm trying to say. We want to learn from you. You can learn from us. Um, our, uh, for instance, with sewage systems, our compost is that comes from these sewage systems that we have is very particular to, particular to um, you know, people eat, people who eat a certain diet will have certain um, minerals and, and nutrients uh, come out the other end. And we want their compost to be in, in certain garden beds, in certain greenhouses. And someone who, with a much different diet, uh, we want their compost to, to use for something else. Um, which makes for amazing plants, let me tell you. Um, that's just scratching the surface of how we relate to our gardens and the, the spirits of everything we eat. Uh, but um, anyway, I, I want to not go on too long here, but I, I've kind of been asked by them to give kind of an, an overview of when... Um, what the Institute for Parallel Exchange does, how we do it, and the benefits. Um, we feel that, uh, as as I've you know, as I've gotten to know many people from your world, um, who, uh, you know, every day I, I I'm very involved in the orientation uh, meetings uh, that help 
new people who have left to our particular culture um, adjust and uh, usually they're involved with host families here, not always. But I, I've gotten to see their reactions to things, the way we do things and their excitement about seeing a culture that is actually sustainable, but technologically savvy. Um, and I, I really have developed a uh, intense yearning to not just import all the people from your parallel world who are really interested in, in living sustainably on the earth over to ours, even though they do get very excited here. But why not import our ways of doing things that they're excited about back to your culture and let you stay there but maybe change some, some ways you do things uh, so that you are living more sustainable, more sustainably with the earth. And I, I think it's just, a, um, uh, I think people deep in their heart know if they are have a calling to leap to another parallel world in, in order to survive, but also in order to thrive. Uh, um, some people feel like they just... Um, are twiddling their thumbs in the culture that they're in, in your culture. They're not, um, they're not thriving, they're not using their creativity, their gifts. They're, they're, they're just kind of hunkered down trying to get through the day and uh, let alone worried about survival in the long term. Uh, those people know who they are uh, and are, are actively, many of them, exploring uh, the possibility of leaping to another parallel world. Now, sometimes when you leap, um, there's a parallel self of yours that stays where you are and a parallel self of yours that goes. Like with Peter and Kathy, they both have experienced that. But it, it, it's making for a very rich um, interchange with the one left behind, so to speak, to have one there, feeding back information and, and going both ways. Because you have your, your people have brought incredible gifts to our culture. It's not just one way. It's really two ways exchange. So, so some people know that leaping is appropriate for them, and some people know that um, bringing uh, new ideas to your culture uh, from other worlds is more in line with their purpose. I, I would kind of assume that if you've listened to this video this far through, that um, you, you have something to do with our culture, and, and with, you know, at least with... Uh, the idea of parallel world exchange, whether it's whether you are the thing that's exchanged, <laughs> you know, like you, you know, your parallel self goes, or whether some of your ideas um, need to come to us, or whether some of our ideas need to be something that you implement in your own life. Um, so I, I would just really um, tell you that you know you you have to see what's you know feel your own calling in this, obviously. But this is something that, um, you know, Kathy and Peter, um, among their colleagues, just kind of sail the world, the, the idea of parallel worlds out and usually feel like they have to know a ton of physics to prove it, you know, so that people will even take them seriously. And, and they're lucky if they do then. Um, I, I, I'm really trying very hard to understand their concern about this and, and what they have to deal with to be on their end of this exchange. Because on my world, um, we've got people coming through, um, visiting from other worlds for the fun of it. Um, you know, we live up in the mountains too, and you know, the tourists come from all over the place for, to visit us um, from other worlds. And the exchange is uh, something that I think everybody in my world just takes for granted that there's the, that there's a lot more to this universe than our particular world, and we can't even imagine being that ethnocentric and um, it's kind of narrow-minded. I think to think that we're the, we're it, you know. We we I I grew up knowing that 
I was one world of many, many worlds in a big universe. And so I, I think it's so... What, I, I think once you have your first exchange experience, and you probably already have in the sleep state, you know, if you've ever woken up with an idea, um, you probably had an exchange with somebody uh, in your soul family, in this dream state, you know, who's on another world. Um, but to, to make that conscious and to uh, say that you want more of it and you want to remember and you want to move into communication and you want to um, be part of a community, an interworld community, is, an, is a bigger step. But I think it's kind of a logical step that at this time when your your technology is to where you're saying you know, you're going to explore outer space more and, and uh, it, it's like, hello, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not, if you don't think spaceship and, and huge, you know, blasting the world with uh, the universe with your human made microwave frequencies, many of which are, or other frequencies that are not even natural, they're jagged shaped wavelengths or whatever, you know, um, that are not very pleasant for the rest of the universe, any more than they're good for your own body to, to have coming at you. Uh, why do you think <laughs> people on other planets want your human generated technological wavelengths when they really, what, what they want is just a heart to heart communication. And um, uh, technology cannot simulate the heart-to-heart -heart resonance that so many of us just um, value and that makes life worth living. Um, you know, sometimes I will, I will visit a world where they're not human there, but they have a really refined consciousness. Uh, they may be nature beings, or they may just be something I don't even have a word for. And it may be a, just a real brief um, interchange of, of love between us. And I, I feel like who I am in my being is kind of the accumulation of experience of all these, we call them devas of relationship, um, um, spirits. You know, anytime you have a relationship with anybody, there's a spirit formed that is your relationship. And I have had, I have so many rich experiences of relationship um, daily, but, but over the, you know, over the years of my life, I've, I feel like who I am is immeasurably richer than who I ever could have been if I had not had all of those contacts. And I think that's really what drives us to um, want to reach out to you and, and to everyone else. Um, it's, it, you know, the technology exchange is great. And we know a lot of pe people are on a dying uh, world uh, that we hope to reach through this camera here. And um, we want to extend a hand of invitation to you and say um, you are probably a close soul family member of mine if you end up leaping to my world. And I care about you. Um, it's natural, I think, to care about people who, when I say soul family members, I say, you are me, I am you, is about as close as we can get if you are my soul family member. We're just two, two flowers on the same stalk, you know, of our, <clears throat> of our soul, our oversoul. And so, of course, I care about you. And, of course, I will extend uh, a helping hand to you if you need to leave your parallel world. Um, and, and we will help you in very concrete ways if you choose to, to leap to our world. I know there are many worlds that are accepting refugees now from your worlds that are dying that have um, really explored an experiment that didn't go so well, put it that way. And that's part of our sole purpose, to do that. But I, I think what really drives me to... Um, but we want to participate in parallel exchange. And, and you know, like I said, we, we learn from ideas from your culture, too. And your technologies are, are quite fascinating, actually. Um, but it, it's just the love. You know, it, it, it just... 
it's just the love that um, is so enriching to everyone involved. So, um, I am uh, really willing to um, organize uh, exchanges with groups of people on your world who are wanting to explore sus sustainable technologies and exchange ideas with our builders and, and uh, transportation experts and um, um, gardeners, farmers, um, you know, you name it, a cultural exchange that would um, bring experts from our we, we, I think that word expert is just so luscious. It's, uh, we don't have a word like that. <laughs> Experts. Um, <laughs> I mean, in, in your culture, I think it means that they're not quite human. They're like um, a little bit better than everybody else. But anyway, people who are really good at what they do uh, here and, and um, um, bring them together with people who are really good at what they do there on your culture, uh, in your world. And set up communication networks through through Kathy. Kathy is um, obviously the psychic I'm using right now to speak to you. She's certainly not the only psychic out there who can facilitate this um, in your world. But um, it's a good place to start if you wish to uh, participate in groups like this. Um, whether you're an expert or a psychic who wants to be involved, uh, have, have you know whatever your gifts. Um, I am offering and other people on my world are very happy to help make the connections and set up the groups that can uh, exchange information, ideas, and hopefully a good time. Um, um, if you yeah, would like to, to um, be involved or know about how to leap off your parallel world, um, please go to um, the, the website that Kathy and Peter have at www.weness, that's W-E-N-E-S-S. -S. We call our soul group the we. Um, um, every soul group is like a we-ness, uh, a collection of, of people that together form an oversoul, uh, or of other beings too. Um, so it's www.weness.org, O-R-G. And there you can find some contact information. You can find look at their uh, uh, Parallel Worlds Leap Handbook um, that has a tremendous amount of detailed... It's like all you need to know to leap. Um, it, it's uh, a really rich resource. It's there for free. And of course, some other YouTube videos or videos that may end up on other other uh, venues too are there. Um, so www.weenus.org. Hope to hear from you if if it's your calling. Um, and um, I'm. I'm <laughs> kind of fascinated. I, I know I'm not the first one, but. Um, that camera, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's huge. It's pointed right at me. It's impersonal, but I know somewhere in there, there's you, there's you. I, I just get a kick out of how your culture has to make everything technical to feel like it's really happening. But here I am, I'm really uh, speaking through Kathy. And... Uh, um, very nice to meet you. All the little people behind that that lens. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. Meet you, and uh, hope to be in contact with some of you. <laughs>